Hi, everybody. I hope you all are doing well and staying safe and enjoying the new year. Now, I like Sonic the Hedgehog, but I've never played the games or seen his shows before. Plus, I'm not a casual fan of Sonic. We better run faster than a speeding cheetah if we're going to catch this nice looking movie and review it. I'll race you there. The story. The story of this movie is fast. The world needed a hero. It got a hedgehog. Powered with incredible speed, Sonic embraces his new home on Earth until he accidentally knocks out the power grid, sparking the attention of uncool evil genius Dr. Robotnik. Now it's supervillain versus supersonic in an all-out race across the globe to stop Robotnik from using Sonic's unique power to achieve world domination. You even want to know my thoughts on the movie? Probably not. This is probably just a dumb idea to begin with. Behind the Scenes Let's speed through the movie to see how it was made. In the opening scene where we see a turtle crossing a road and Sonic swoops it up, saving it from being hit by a car, no traffic was allowed during filming. Before the turtle was placed on the highway pavement, the pavement was cooled down with ice water. The path to be walked by the turtle did not have any hazards and was checked by its handlers. The turtle walked an A to B trajectory. Ben Schwartz voices and provides the facial motion capture for Sonic. In video game slash animated media, Sonic is depicted as having conjoined eyes as if he's wearing a visor slash glasses. The film's design has him with two normal eyes, but homages his conjoined eye design with a strip of white hair on his nose between his eyes. Crazy Carl, the local who's hunting the Blue Devil in Green Hills, shows a wildly inaccurate drawing of Sonic as a description. This is a reference to Sonic, a pop culture phenomenon about poorly drawn portrayals of Sonic. The film's original design of Sonic drew complaints, with some fans comparing it to Sonic. In the baseball scene, Sonic's running animation when running at high speeds around the baseball diamond looks strikingly like Sonic CD's pencil test animation. Robotnik being way slimmer than usual is a callback to Sonic the comic, where he starts out being on the thin side before gaining his iconic rotundness. Jim Carrey entirely improvised Dr. Robotnik's dance scene. Carrey also recommended the song Where Evil Grows, which he had heard as a child. During Robotnik's dance sequence with a VR screen, he pretends to be skiing. When he does the movement, it is highly identical to what Jim Carrey had done for the Grinch in How the Grinch Stole Christmas from 2000. Some of the posters and renders of Sonic are shout-outs to the games. One pose from the first trailer's concept artwork has Sonic in his pose from Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 3D and Wii U. This was later recreated in the November 2019 motion poster. Another pose from the aforementioned concept artwork is him in a pose that looks similar to Sonic's pose from Sonic Mania's box art. Another pose from the concept art has the original design of Sonic in his pose from Sonic the Hedgehog from 2006. This pose was later recreated with the redesigned Sonic and released as a standalone render when the second trailer was released. A poster that was released alongside the first trailer shows Sonic running along a large building in a city that looks very similar to Speed Highway. The poster released alongside the second trailer has Sonic in his pose from Sonic Unleashed's box art. Some TV spots and a scene from Wiz Khalifa, Ty Dalla, Sign Lil Yachty, and Suko the Child Speed Me Up have Sonic in his pose from his Super Smash Bros. Ultimate render. Ben Schwartz didn't have to be on set to play his role, 
but he was familiar with what happened on set and explained to Polygon that three different methods were used to create Sonic, all in an effort to make sure James Marston's eye line was set correctly so that it would look like he really was talking to a bipedal blue hedgehog. According to Schwartz, we had three different versions of the doll, one that I guess you'd call a doll, one that you would hold. And then for James, also they had like a tennis ball. The whole thing that James and Jeff Fowler, the director who's been amazing, was eye lines. They didn't want it to look like James was just looking at a person. They wanted to know exactly where Sonic's eyes would be and stuff like that, which I thought was so great. So there was like three different versions of Sonic. Marza Animation Planet, Sega's in-house animation studio, animated the film. Additionally, it was later revealed that Tim Miller's animation studio, Blur, would be animating as well. Both studios have a history with the Sonic the Hedgehog series, with Blur responsible for animating cutscenes for Shadow the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog, and Marza responsible for animating cutscenes for games in the series since 2008. Marza animated the opening sequence for the film. The production team originally created a more realistic design for Sonic, which incorporated more fur, more spikes over his body, new running sneakers, normal-sized eyes, and a more human, athletic face. This design got a lot of negative feedback, and the film's release was delayed by a few months while Sonic was redesigned to have a more faithful, cartoonish design. The only major element kept was the new sneakers, which he was going to change to his red shoes. The film got delayed after the backlash of Sonic's initial design, making it the third time Paramount has had to completely redesign a character in the middle of movie production due to negative reception. The first was Megatron from Transformers from 2007, after fans complained he looked nothing like the original design. About a decade later, Monster Trucks from 2016 had to be postponed for a full year due to the main monster's original design being so visually frightening that it terrified children in the test audience. The movie is the second time a Western company did a redesign of the titular character that was rejected by Sega. The first film was around the development of Sonic Boom, when Big Red Button tried to offer the character and his cast complete redesigns, but were rejected by Sega, asking for something closer to the original modern design. According to animator Max Schneider, Paramount expected that Sonic fans would object to the dis redesign, but that general audiences would not care as had been the case with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2014, he said Paramount felt the design gelled with the real-world setting and characters. The zones from the Sonic games have been adapted into parallel worlds in the film. This isn't totally unheard of in Sonic lore. In the early issues of the Archie comics, the zone term was used to describe the different regions on Mobius. This didn't last long, but it speaks to how different creative teams have interpreted the various levels in Sonic's games. This is the second Sonic the Hedgehog project created outside Japan, where Sonic is not voiced by his original voice actor from the 1990s cartoons, Jaleel White, after the Cartoon Network series Sonic Boom. Artist Tyson Hesse, who worked on previous Sonic the Hedgehog media, was brought on to lead the redesign. The production crew used Ted from 2012 as an influence and studied different variations of the character to develop the character's final design. The redesigns to Sonic cost an additional $5 million and caused the BFX Studio Moving Picture Company to close its Vancouver studio. The characters. Let's be fast on meeting the characters. Sonic is an anthropomorphic hedgehog born with the power of supersonic speed from a different planet who was forced to leave his homeworld from evil forces and build a life for himself on Earth. 
with Dr. Robotnik after him, he is on the run with a police officer from Green Hills. Then there's Tom Wachowski, who becomes friends with Sonic. He is a sheriff working for the police force in Green Hills, Montana, and plans to become part of the San Francisco Police Department. He later becomes Sonic's adoptive father. Maddie is Tom's wife and Sonic's adoptive mother. She is a helpful and grateful person who does not forget being helped and is willing to pay back the help she owed. And last, but certainly not least, is Dr. Robotnik, a.k.a. Dr. Eggman. He is a brilliant yet unstable and narcissistic roboticist who was hired by the U.S. government to capture Sonic the Hedgehog. However, as time went on, it soon became clear that Robotnik planned to take Sonic's powers for himself in order to conquer the world. Henceforth, he is Sonic the Hedgehog's arch-nemesis, just like in other adaptions. According to director Jack Fowler, Knuckles the Echidna was meant to appear in the film in a major role, but he was left out of the story to keep it simple. The goal was to nail Sonic and Robotnik, establishing their classic rivalry. There's a lot of great characters in the Sonic universe, but it's the most important thing is just to get Sonic set up and just tell a little bit of an origin story with him and just do it in a way that really makes everyone fall in love with him as a character and just be rooting for more. And then, if all that goes well, then we can kind of open it up and bring in some of these other characters that fans know and love. And yeah, I mean, no one's more excited than me to have that opportunity. Jack Fowler explained that he wanted to feature Tails as a nod to the fans and the wider Sonic world. There's so many great characters in the Sonic world, and we really wanted the focus of this film to be Sonic or Robotnik, just because that's how we were all introduced to these characters back in that first game, he said. Tails was just a way of saying to the fans, look guys, we love these characters too. We might not have been able to include them in this story, but we would love to include them in future stories. There are other characters like Tails that we would have so much fun working with, and hopefully we'll get the opportunity to do the, some stories with him. Sonic is the fifth character voiced by Ben Schwartz to be associated with the color blue. The other four were Skidmark the Snail in Turbo from 2013, Uncle Steve the Troll in Nickelodeon's Wally Kazam, two-partner special, Wally Kazam the Big Goblin Problem, Dewey Duck in DuckTales, and Leonardo in Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Jim Carrey described his character as a madman and added saying, he's got 300 IQ so it took a week and a half to prepare. Tom Wachowski, played by James Marston, shares the same name as the main character in the creepypasta Sonic.exe. However, there is no connection to this movie and the story. Tails was introduced as the Player 2 character in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Tails looks set to play a major role in the film's sequel. Goodbye, everybody, and enjoy the new year! Unlike most of my other review videos, the end credits for this won't have any music, just so you'll know.